Hey guys, it's Shubi Beaver here, and today I wanted to do a foundation and highlighting and contouring routine for you guys. So I just wanted to break down the basics of what I do when I apply my foundation and concealers and why I do it because I figured that it could be helpful for someone who's like just getting started with using foundation and stuff so I'm not doing a full face tutorial even though I am wearing a full face of makeup I'll have a tutorial on this eye look very soon so stay tuned for that my setup is different because I'm moving, so it's a lot harder for me to find places in my house to film. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, as well as subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future content. And I would also really appreciate it if you check out my social media sites, which will be linked in the description bar below. If you're interested in seeing how I do my foundation, keep on watching. So always before doing your foundation, I strongly recommend using primer. And the reason why is because it, one, ensures that your face makeup will stay on longer, and two, it provides a nice, clean, smooth base and barrier between your skin and the actual foundation, which is good and better for the skin. Primers vary based on what type of skin type you may have and how much money you want to spend. I personally, with face products, I tend to go through my face products more quickly than my eyeshadows. So I'll tend to spend more money on my eye products because they'll last me longer and they're better quality. But my face products, I will usually buy more drugstore, such as drugstore foundations and drugstore foundation primer. One that I've really been enjoying is the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser. It's very, very cheap, but I'm out of it, so we're not gonna be using that today. This is the Nivea Men's Post Shave Balm, and it's not designed to be a primer, but it does work very well because it has a lot of glycerin in it. So I'm going to be using this. Now, one thing about this is it makes my nose kind of oily. If you have oily skin, I would recommend that you go with this instead. I like to put foundation on my neck as well so that it matches my face. So that's why I'm putting primer on my neck. Okay, next I like to color correct before I apply any foundation or concealer and color correcting just takes care of any discoloration or any other problematic areas on the skin. I have very dark circles underneath my eyes and some spots on my face where I have darker pigmentation. So for that reason, I use an orange concealer corrector. If you are not as dark as me or your problematic areas are not as dark as mine, you don't need an orange this pigmented. You could probably use a peach if you're lighter skin tone or maybe even like a salmon color. So not everybody is this doesn't just it's not like a one-size-fits-all type of thing also if you don't really have any problematic areas on your face then you don't really need to color correct so don't think that you have to do this step I'll be putting a little bit underneath my under eyes and I'm going to take this Morphe E22 brush, it's an eyeshadow brush. Since we are going to be using foundation and other concealers on top of this, this is blended out well enough for my liking. So now we are going to go on ahead into the foundation. If you had a lot of problematic stuff on your skin such as acne or super big pimple or something, then you would use a skin tone concealer to cancel those out like we did the darkness but I don't really have that problem so I'm gonna go on ahead to the foundation next so since it's summertime right now I would typically use matte foundations but I prefer a more dewy luminous look all the time so let's see am I gonna use matte or dewy I'm gonna go with the dewy I'm gonna be mixing the L'Oreal Pro Glow foundation in the shade Coco and I'm going to be using the Milani Conceal and Perfect 2-in-1 Foundation and Concealer in Golden Toffee. I honestly am not a huge fan of this, but since I bought it and can't get my money back for it, I'm going to use it up. 
but I will not be purchasing this. Again, if you want to see a video on this and why I'm not very thrilled about this, you just let me know in the comments below and I can do that for you. But this is one of my favorites right now. So we're going to mix these two together. So I'm just applying this on the back of my hand. I'm only using a little bit of the Pro Glow and more of the Milani because the Pro Glow is not in my correct shade. As you can see in the difference in skin tone there. Now I like a more full coverage foundation. This is my favorite brush to use to um, do my face. So this is the uh, Real Techniques Buffing Brush. This is by far my favorite brush. Now what I like to do to enhance my full coverage is I will apply the foundation directly to my face and you should start applying it first where you want the most coverage, which is always the front of the face. So I tend to dot more in this area first. And I'll dot the least amount up here because I don't want that much up there. You really don't have many problems or much to cover up there. So you don't want to apply a lot of product up there. And then we'll go here, here, and then the rest on my neck. Whatever I have left over, I will put on my brush and then I will start blending in the foundation. Now I always go in downward motions on the face because you would be going against the grain if you went upwards because your hairs would kind of go upwards and they grow downwards. So if you do it downwards, your face will appear more smooth. Whereas if you blend upwards or in circles, then your face will look more patchy. The reason why I like to put foundation on my lips is because my lips are two different colors. My top lip is brown and my bottom lip is pink. So if I put foundation on top, that just evens out the colors and makes them the same color. Now, the reason why you still see the red underneath here is because I really didn't get much foundation underneath the eyes and that's because we're going to be putting concealer underneath here anyway and you don't want a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of product underneath the eyes because then it'll get really creasy really quickly and that'll look a hot mess. I did forget to mention that other ways that you can apply your foundation is with a beauty sponge so if you want a lighter coverage I recommend that because it absorbs the extra product that you don't need so that's an option as well also you can use your hands because your hands kind of just help the product to melt and smooth into the skin but obviously you wouldn't do that if you were doing makeup on a client so now we're gonna get into concealer today I'm gonna be using the Maybelline fit me concealer in the shade 30 which is cafe now this is obviously much lighter than my skin tone and the reason why is because i'm using this to highlight my features that i want highlighted i want to highlight underneath my eyes the bridge of my nose keep its bow a little bit underneath my chin and my forehead because if you see right now i want to basically highlight where the light hits my face so that my face doesn't look flat and one-dimensional so I'm going to take just a little bit of this underneath here. So for me, this is more than enough. I'm going to be using my Real Techniques highlighting contour brush and I'm going to just blend it out. Now I'm going to pounce it instead of doing like this because then the product will stay where I placed it. Now I'm gonna be using the brush that I used to apply my foundation with and I'm going to blend out the areas between the concealer and the foundation where they meet so that it's a seamless transition. 
just like we would do with eyeshadow. I hope that makes sense. Basically, I don't want it to be super obvious that I applied different shades different places. So I want it to look very seamless. Okay, it is very important to set the areas where you apply foundation because since you're applying it on top of other product, it's gonna be a lot easier for it to slide off the face and crease. I'm gonna be using the Maybelline Master Fix setting powder. It's a very, very, very fine milled translucent powder. It is the finest milled powder I've ever seen or used. It's actually 100% translucent, which I really love because a lot of times nowadays, translucent powders are translucent, but they also add brightening to it, which sometimes makes it a little bit too light underneath the eyes. So this one does not add any brightness, which you may not like, but I do like. Sorry guys, I have like repair people in my house because like I said, we're moving, so. It's a lot going on. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the Morphe E48 brush to do my translucent powder. And if you're wondering why mine is brown and the ones that are out right now are blondy, whitish, I don't think that this has come out yet. I think they're reformulating their Elite collection and this is what the new ones will look like. So I don't think this is out yet, but yeah, just so you know. Some people do baking. A lot of times I will do baking, but I'm not today. Just because I don't really want to today. But I set my entire nose, even the spots where I just applied foundation because otherwise it'll get extremely oily. And now I'm going to just use a powder brush and just wipe away or buff away any extra excess translucent powder. So now I'm going to contour and contouring is adding darkness and depth to the face. So basically where your face naturally has shadows, for example, right here and right here is where you would want to contour. So anything you wanna make slimmer, I have a pretty chubby face, not gonna lie. So if I contour in this area, it makes it look a little bit slimmer. There's a lot of contour kits and creams and stuff out there that you can use. Honestly, I just use a dark eyeshadow. For the longest time, there weren't really any like contour shades my shade that I could actually use to actually contour with. So I started using um, eyeshadows when I first got into makeup. So. Since they've never steered me wrong, I really haven't invested in a contour kit or anything yet. But I do think I want to support Shayla and get her contour kit if it's going to, you know, work for my skin tone. But yeah, I'm going to be using the color Triple Fudge from the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette because it's nice and dark and I can easily contour with that shade. I'm using this contour brush from a set that I got from patpat.com, which is an Australian site. It was an impulse buy, pretty random. And yeah, so this is basically it for my foundation, highlighting and contouring routine. Now, if you want to add some extra va va voom to your highlighting, then you could add a highlighter to your face, which I almost always do. From this point on, you would just do highlighter, blush, lipstick, mascara, falsies, or whatever to finish off your look. So I will show you guys how I do my highlight. My highlighter differs based off of how my makeup looks, 
or the tones that I use or if I want a more neutral versus a bold highlight. Most of the times I like a really bold highlight. I know most people don't. That's okay. I tend to really go full force. <laughs> this one actually for me I think is a little bit more toned down. But this is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in Crown of My Canopy. This is the Morphe M310 brush. So I'm going to use this. Alrighty guys, so this concludes my tutorial on how I do my foundation, highlight, and contour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for your support and for watching. I hope to see you in my next video. Peace out. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Whoa. What the fuck is going on? Wipe this clean real quick. Now, of course, the time that I say this doesn't brighten, it looks more bright on camera. <laughs> so, <sighs> let me try that one more time. Let me try that one more time, one more time, one more time. I'm going to be using the fudge. I'm gonna be using the fudge, guys. Oh, it is